Welcome to Epic Space Models. In this episode, we will model the interstage of the BFR. Let's get started. Since the four grid fins are using exactly the same mechanism, we are going to leverage this symmetry. Indeed, we will draw only one quarter of the design, then repeat it four times to create the rest of the model. So first I create one quarter of the interstage, then I insert the grid fin mechanism that I designed in the previous episode. So I lock the mechanism in place and make sure that it is correctly aligned. Then I create the mating interface at the top and at the bottom of the interstage. So the bottom of the interstage is mated with the booster core and the top of the interstage can be mated with the spaceship. So each time you want to mate several parts, you need to add this kind of structure to connect them together. And when you do that, you want to make sure that you are not creating new problems like adding some new structure that overlaps with existing one. Especially at the top of the interstage where you have the fin hub, you don't want to add some structure that is going to overlap with this hub. Now that we have the mating interface in place, the next step is to cut out a hole on the side of the interstage so that the hub of the grid fin mechanism can go through the wall and connect with the grid fin at the outside of the interstage. So each time you want to have two parts rotating with respect to one another, you need to have some clearance between the, these two parts. So the first time I designed this mechanism, I didn't put enough clearance between the hub and the interstage. And after I 3D printed it, I had to widen the hole manually in order to have enough clearance for it to move. So unfortunately, I don't get the clearance right 100% of the time. Now, the next thing to do is to add some structure to restrain the hub so that it cannot move in the horizontal plane. And to do that, I add some structure to the interstage, which acts as a kind of stopper, and this prevents the hub from going any further along its axis. Okay, now we have to do something for this poor servo motor at the bottom, which is not attached to anything for the moment. So this servo motor has to be bolted directly to the interstage. So to do that, I added a mount plate, then I inserted a bracket, and once I have this bracket in place around the servo motor, I can use it as a reference to know exactly where I have to drill holes in the mount plate so that I can lock the servo motor in position using screws. So this is a good practice when you're doing this kind of design, is to have first the bracket in place and use it as a reference to know uh, where to put the screws. So now we have to do something for the push-pull mechanism, which is for the moment going right through this mount plate. So to remove the interference, I cut out a rectangular hole inside the mount plate so that the two links from the push-pull can have enough room to go through the interstage and connect with the hub at the top. But by doing so, we found ourselves with this triangular section at the bottom of the mount plate, which is very loosely connected to the rest of the interstage. So to prevent it from breaking, I add some reinforcement structure on both sides, and this provides enough strength and rigidity for a viable design. Now we still need to add one more structure to fully constrain the hub in the horizontal plane. And this will be done by creating a pillar at the center of the interstage. So this part finally constrains the motion of the hub in the horizontal plane, uh, left, right, and towards the center. So when we will put this mechanism together, we will first insert the four grid fin mechanism inside of the interstage, then insert the pillar in the middle, and finally lock the pillar in position by inserting a screw from the bottom of the interstage. So when you are designing this kind of model, you definitely want to think beforehand about in which order you're going to put the part together. Okay, now that we have one quarter of the design finished, we just have to copy paste it using a circular pattern to create the rest of the model. So I copy the interstage itself, I copy the pillar in the middle, and I also copy the grid fin mechanism to uh, make the rest of the model. 
and I make sure that everything is locked in position and I also synchronize the motion of the grid fin so that they all deploy at the same time. Now that I'm done with the grid fin mechanism, I have also to copy the servo brackets which are at the bottom of the interstage. And finally, there's one more feature that I need to add, and this is a hole in the mount plate of the servo motors. And this, is, this hole is required so that the cable from the servo motors at the top of the interstage can go down the interstage and be connected to the control board at the bottom of the booster. And now we are finally done with the design of the interstage, which is by far the most complicated part of this model. Thank you for watching. In the next episode, we will start 3D printing and assembling this epic model. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.